This is Colossians 1. For this video, we are just dealing with making observations on the text. Observations answer the question, what does this passage say? Later on, we'll get to interpretation and application. Interpretation then asks the question, well, what does this mean? And then application, what does this mean to me? To me? <clears throat> However, here we're just dealing with observation. What does the text say? And so let me read this once and try to color coordinate, and then we will go through this uh, verse by verse and phrase by phrase to make various observations and, and, and ask key questions. And so we start. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always, now we, going back to Paul and Timothy, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this, of, of this hope, you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you. Of this, you have heard before. In the word of truth, <clears throat> the gospel, which has come to you, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and increasing. So it also does among you. Since the day, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. <clears throat> Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us of your love in the spirit. So just to make a few points here, just as you learned it from Epaphras, who is Epaphras? We will come back to that. Our beloved fellow servant, faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and he has made known to us of your love in the spirit. Now, we see that this starts off with, with a word of introduction. Uh, he is identifying himself, right? Paul, an apostle, by the will of God, Timothy, our brother, to the saints, grace and peace to you. After that, we have a bit of a break. Now we will get to his heart and almost like the cause of his uh, prayer, the heart behind his prayer. And then in the next video from verses 9 to 14, we will get to the content of the prayer. But here we start simple. He says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Uh, now, this is a, a typical uh, introduction. Uh, he names himself, and then the reader, he gives a greeting. Usually, this portion says something about the tone of the letter and where it's going. When this is not there, when this introduction is a bit different, like in the book of Galatians, he is trying to say something significant here. Now, he starts off and says that he is an apostle. Uh, what is an apostle? Um, he, Paul wrote about a dozen letters, and about seven of them, he introduces himself as an apostle. Uh, a few times, I think three times, he uh, describes himself as a servant, or more accurately, as a slave. Uh, once he says that he is a prisoner of Christ. But when we come to the idea of apostle, I don't want to interpret that just yet, but I want us to take note and consider what does it mean? 
Uh, what is the meaning of it? Uh, what is the calling behind it? Why is he starting in this way? And then he says that this is also by the will of God. And then he comes to Timothy and says that he is our brother. Now, we know from our studies that, <clears throat> um, that uh, there was several people who came to Christ during Paul's first missionary journey. But it was during the second um, that, that um, Timothy actually joined his mission and encouraged him and really supported him. And we read about Timothy, for example, in Philippians 2.20, where it says, I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son was his, with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. So Timothy is someone who does not look out for his own interests, but the interests of Jesus Christ. Okay, so Paul and Timothy to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ. So he says that they are saints and they are faithful. So in this case, saints are not those super uh, Christians at a higher level, completely extraordinary. The saints here are the Christians. So people of different languages, cultures, social status, races who are coming together, maybe outside of the church had no connection, but in Christ, they are family, they are related, they are, they are part of this community. Um, and, and they are not only saints, but they are also the faithful brothers. Now, keep in mind that, that Paul was not the one who planted this ministry. He mentions Epaphras. Um, while he was preaching in Ephesus in Acts 19, Epaphras and Philemon came to Christ. And, and then they traveled about 100 miles to, to, to share the gospel in different cities. Colossae was was one of them. And so this is started by Epaphras, but Paul hears of this, right? And, and says they are saints and they are faithful. They, they are trustworthy. Okay. They are reliable. Then he says, grace to you and peace. Now you might kind of quickly look at that and kind of move on. That's typical. We see that in every letter, but it's not, it's not something to be taken lightly. Um, we see this all throughout Paul's letters. He says, grace to you at the beginning and at the ending, he says, grace be with you. And so it's as if he's starting his teaching and says, this, this here is grace. Take it. I pray that it changes you. I pray that this grace works powerfully in your life. So he takes the common greeting of peace, peace to you, shalom. And he changes it to a whole new level when he adds grace to it. What is the connection? What changes come upon a group of people when there is first grace and then there's peace? Why is Paul starting his letter this way? What does he want to indicate to the readers about this grace and peace? And so let's move on here. It says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Okay? We thank God. We're praying for you since the day we heard. What do we hear? It says that we heard of your faith and love. Uh, that you have, and that's based on the hope. Um, and, and you've heard about this hope from the word of truth, the gospel. It's come to you, right? It's come through the whole world. All over, it is bearing fruit, increasing as it does among you since that first day. Now, he's going back and forth. If you take note of the references to time, he's going back and forth. So let's try to look at this from a logical order here. Epaphras is a beloved and fellow servant. He is faithful in the ministry. And then it says that Epaphras taught the gospel, okay? He's a faithful minister. So he was teaching. He was instructing. And then we see that Paul and Timothy, they heard, okay? So I'll put that up, up here. Logical order. So this is the ministry that Epaphras is doing. They heard about this. And, and um, they are mindful that at the same time, this gospel is bearing fruit and increasing all over. Not only is it bearing fruit and increasing all over, it is bearing fruit and increasing in the church, in that community. And this gospel is coming to them with hope. And this hope is what fuels them and empowers them to have faith and love. And as they grow in their faith and love, Paul and Timothy hears about this and they pray for them with thanksgiving that is the logical order of all this so he says we always thank god now take note of that verb take note of the the tense of that 
Uh, is it is it one time? Is it continual? Is it ongoing? Uh, keep in mind that he hasn't met them. Um, he doesn't know them personally. He hasn't been with them. He's writing from prison. This is towards the end of his life, maybe just a few years from being martyred. And yet, and yet, take note, he thanks them. Uh, later on, we see at the end uh, of the prayer, he is calling them to give thanks. But here, here in kind of contrast, he is the one who is thanking. And what is he thanking for? He is prayerfully thanking God for their faith in Christ Jesus and the love that they have for all the saints. Now, keep in mind what was happening. Keep in mind uh, the kinds of people in this setting. Keep in mind uh, the false teaching that was spreading. In the midst of all that, they still maintained and grew in their faith in Christ. At the same time, they were being loving towards the, towards the saints. A, a love that, that comes from Christ, uh, a, a love that is like Christ, a love that is for Christ. And so here we see faith, hope, and love, right? This, this kind of famous trio once more together. But what is the relationship? What does it mean that it is because, you know, because is, is a connecting word. Imagine you are building a, a house using bricks and, and kind of the mortar, this, the cement in between are these conjunctions. They are holding the bricks together. They are holding the house together. And so when you see words like and, but, for, and so on here, because you have to take note of that. What is the relationship? What does it mean that this faith in Christ, love for others, is coming from, it, coming from this hope, this hope that is laid up for you? Imagine that. Visualize that. Take note of this figure of speech. What does it mean that this hope is laid up? Uh, maybe it means it is, it is stored up. Maybe it is protected. And keep in mind that he says because of this hope, almost to say that, that maybe the, the faith and love is springing from this hope or, 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 or that it is, it is based on, it is because of this hope. So what does it mean to have faith that comes from hope? What, what does it mean to believe in the midst of fears and doubts because of this real living hope? What does it mean to love because of this hope? Because of this assurance and this security that is laid up for us, what does it mean to love in light of that? So, so this is their situation. This is what's happening here. And it says that Paul heard, Paul and Timothy, they heard about this from Epaphras. They, they keep hearing. Uh, Epaphras was that beloved fellow servant, faithful in ministry. He is, he is also a prayer warrior. Uh, if you look at the end of Colossians, we see that Paul references uh, Epaphras in, in uh, 4.12 and says, Look, he is one of you, a servant. And, and take note of this. Epaphras is always struggling on your behalf in his prayer. So he is, he is fighting in prayer for you. He is faithfully praying for you. Now, what does that say about his heart? It says here that Paul hears about their faith. Their faith here. Since, okay, another keyword. Since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. And so the gospel has been at work in this community, not just in the whole world where it is bearing fruit and increasing, but since day one of this community, they heard it, they understood it. Um, maybe they were asking questions, they were getting answers, they were raising issues, they were digging in scripture, they were learning Okay, what is, what is the Greek word for learning? That's, that's an interesting kind of word study. What does it mean that they were learning? And what does it mean that it doesn't simply say they had faith, but it says they heard it and they understood it. And then it says, just as you learned it. So, so what is the role of hearing, understanding, and learning in faith? And as they are hearing and understanding and learning, the gospel is bearing fruit and increasing increasing all over hold on a sec didn't we just say that paul wrote this about uh 60 a.d and and isn't that just about 30 years after christ and so isn't it interesting that he says in those 30 years already 
all over the gospel is bearing fruit and increasing. What does that say about the gospel? What does that say about the power of God? What does that say that in the midst of, of all the persecution, in the midst of all the false teaching, it says that since that day, so from day one, without skipping a beat, the gospel is at work. The gospel is changing lives. Now, again, I'm not trying to interpret the passage. I'm just emphasizing what we see already from just the, the observations here. And so the gospel has come to them through Epaphras. He is that faithful servant. He is that faithful minister. And, and because of that, the gospel is something that they are hearing and understanding and learning. And the more they hear and understand, the gospel is changing them. There's life, there's fruit, there's growth, not just among them, but also in the whole world. And this, this right here is what Paul and Timothy are hearing. And as they hear, they are responding with prayer and in their prayer, they are giving thanks. This is what we see just from a simple step of observation. We're trying to dig the scripture first to see what does it say before we move on to what it means and finally what this means for us.